So, Tristan, um, number two. We've got number yeah. two right here. So, um, I suppose let's start at the beginning. Like, how did you get this role in Stranger in, in Stranger Things? What was that process like? Yeah, so I had read with the casting director, Carmen Cuba, for a ton of other projects before this one. And so she was relatively familiar with me already. And then she actually... So I read for Eddie Munson, who is one of the other characters in season four, was not right for it. And she was very good to go with uh, Joseph Quinn, who ended up getting the role because I would not have been as good as him. But I at least had kind of let that be kind of like, a, I don't know what the word is, but she later on after the pandemic reached back out to my agent and was like hey so we would love for him to read for this character gave me the dummy sides said to just go and and have fun with it and then i got cast off of one tape which is every actor's dream i think so they don't have to go through the whole crazy audition process well that's that's pretty impressive and this is it's one of the things about stranger things that's been so impressive this whole this whole throughout the whole show is the casting process mm -hmm. they just seem to get it spot on every time and uh watching you as number two honestly uh <laughs> you you came, you came across as a pretty good bully well, thank <laughs> and... you it's so funny because so many people even my family were just like it was like a demon took over your eyes like we could not recognize you at all um which is such a huge compliment of course but oh, yeah. it really it really was you really got invested in the role and um one of one of the things that uh, that i wanted to ask you when james told me we we're going to get to interview you was um you have a really really impactful scene uh, in this in this in season four with millie bobby brown and i wanted to know what what was what was that like i know that they, there was some visual effects stuff going on in uh, in a lot of your scenes so what what was all of that like it was super cool. Um, I I think like every film nerd growing up, I, I've always just been fascinated by the different ways that they would do different special effects and movies and all that kind of stuff. And it was super cool because you're talking about like the full on beat down, like bully beat yes, down. Yes, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, it was super cool. They had her up on these wires so that it would look super real that she was being thrown about. And that was just such a super cool experience. Um, it was one of those experiences as well where Millie is so sweet and kind in real life that it was so, so crushing to have to like be so mean to her and so we would cut and i would just want to apologize to her and be like i'm so sorry you're wonderful i don't actually want you to die so um, <laughs> that was an interesting experience but yeah being able to just be part of that act, like it, it's crazy just how much practical effects they use like mm. so much of it you would think would be cgi and it'd be easy to cgi some of that stuff but even down to vecna with the wonderful makeup department creating that in camera it, it is just super cool so. yeah that was actually one of the questions i i have here further down for you so uh, did you ever get to see jamie campbell bauer in full vecna costume I did not, but one of my best buds from the show, Luke Bambrick, he actually got to see Jamie in costume, and he said it was terrifying because at first <laughs> he actually didn't know that it was Jamie, and then he had to like go get something for him. I I, I wonder. If, I think it was like a coffee or something like that, and then he just heard Jamie's like super sweet British voice underneath this just creepy. It was. It was trippy, he said. So yeah, it must have been. I remember watching the show. I was watching it with my wife, and when that reveal happened, she was like, "Oh my god, that's that's like a massive reveal!" And then when I when I told her that that was all practical, she could, she could not believe it because you can't re you can't recognize it at all. Yeah, uh, but there there were some. Um, there, I mean, we were talking a bit about you working with Millie Bobby Brown, but actually, I do think in most of those scenes was it uh, Marty Blair that you that you got to work with um honestly it was it was pretty even um yeah i would say i, I probably worked more with millie just because okay. in like my close-ups and my like 
all, all that kind of stuff. They used Millie as the person yeah. standing in. Um, but I, I worked with Marty a little bit as well, and she's also super sweet, super yeah. fun to work with. And everyone on that set is just so passionate about what they're doing, and I think it shows in the final product because you can always tell when people are making something for the love of it versus when they're making something just to be working or to make money and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that that I, I wanted to to mention Marty a little bit because of course. If you don't know, if you're watching this, Marty was the one, the kind of the stand-in for, mm -hmm. for 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 young eleven. So you know, I think um, that was something that I was I was when I I didn't know this was going to happen in the show before watching it, and I was really surprised at how it was done yeah. and done so well. So I just I wanted to know how that like interaction went on set. So um, I'll tell you this: they it was super because I got to see how they did some of those like special effects. And the way they did it was so cool because they, they in a lot of the mirror scenes, they would have to yeah. perfectly sync up Millie and Marty moving. And it, it's not a mirror at all. It's basically like a cutout where they would have to replicate both sides of it. And they would have to perfect. Yeah. It, it was it was super cool the way that they filmed it. Um, I mean, it it comes off, it comes across really well, and uh, we also we wanted to know, like, was there any kind of background research you had to do for your character before before getting on set? Um, not not necessarily. I did binge through all of the seasons of the show in my hotel room because we had to do a mandatory five day sequester. Yeah, and so I spent that time just watching the show and trying not to go crazy, but. <laughs> Um, one really cool thing that I did was go to the actual abandoned Hawkins lab, which is where they shot a lot of the scenes. And I used that as research and I went there yeah. with my, my friend Luke as well. And we just kind of went and explored all the different areas. We got to see where Sean Astin died and I think it was <laughs> season two. Um, so that was a super cool experience and I got to use that as like a little bit of character work and character study. But outside of that, I just kind of watched the show and did some journaling. So, well, that's, that's enough research. You've got, you've got three seasons of the show to watch beforehand. So that's, that's exactly. really pretty yeah. good. Um, and what, what was it like becoming part of the, uh, the stranger things family and, and getting to, um, to meet like the Duffer brothers, what, what were they like to work with? Yeah, it, it's super, it was such a blessing because it really, it didn't feel like this big thing in the sense of everybody's so welcoming and it feels like you're just walking on set with a bunch of friends that you've just happened to have not met before. Yeah. And everybody is just, everybody's so fun to work with. The Duffers are so crystal clear on the vision that they have and they do a great job of making sure that they're very good at communicating what they want and exactly how they want it while also being open and malleable to whatever else mm. might have any ideas that people may have so it, it's always super cool to work with a leader that has a vision and they definitely had that vision yeah and i do believe that you did you get to work with sean levy on this show i i did not unfortunately no. i, I worked I with I worked with basically the Duffers and then uh, Nimrod, who I think directed yes. five projects. That was and what what was Nimrod like to work with? Oh, I love him so much. He is my favorite person I've ever worked with, just ever. He is just he's the perfect example of how one person can make the environment just so welcoming just so positive and and so safe to to be vulnerable in and one thing i always commended him on is that every single day he would make sure to remember everybody's name he would introduce himself to everyone even the pas the extras like he went above and beyond to really make sure that everybody knew how much he appreciated their work and i've just i've never felt safer to just go in a dark place than i have with him as the director so well, you had to go to some really dark places as well and um when i was watching when i was watching the show and when james told me that we we're going to get to interview i really wanted 
to know what what was the most challenging part of playing two for you it it was definitely um so first off the electrocution scene that i had yeah. I didn't get that until the day or two days before because they forgot to send me that entire scene. And so that was honestly a blessing in disguise because I didn't have any time to get like intellectual with it or to get super actor brain with it. I had to just go with my instincts and just trust that they would lead me in the right place. And I think that the toughest part about playing a character like two is that every single scene I had was to a 10 like i didn't yeah. have any just like low-key conversational scenes it was just pedal to the metal for the entire time and the tough part about that is the way i get into a headspace like that is i have this specific process of disassociation that gets that allows basically my dark side to come out to play and being in that headspace for a prolonged period of time makes it harder to come out of the longer it goes on mm. and so i did have some issue with trying to shake all of that off as i got back to my hotel room and not always succeeding at that and finding some type of way to embrace that darkness without it taking me over in a way um and i eventually found my balance with that but a lot of it too was like i'm gonna go as dark as i can because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity i don't care what my mental health is like i'm just gonna go there <laughs> but i'm now getting to that phase where i'm realizing okay don't sacrifice your well-being for anything yeah. um there are ways to go there without having to let it be in a damaging way so yeah and and I guess like with with you being kind of in the midst of COVID, like this was filmed basically during what well, it was filmed during a pandemic that might have that must have made it even harder because you're going back to your hotel room. You were probably isolated from other people as well yeah. when you're doing that. So I can For imagine sure. that must have been really tricky. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was interesting. Um, I, I would say that it's it's one of those beautiful situations because I think it allowed me to solely focus on that. And it, it was to the point where 24 hours a day, my mind was on two and it was on the show and it was on giving the best possible performance that I had. But I agree, it, it did make it a little bit tough and it, it made me feel a bit lonely at times, but that's why having such welcoming people on set and being able to hang out with Luke outside of set was very yeah. beneficial for me. And um, you mentioned that scene, the um, the scene with the electrocution collar, which is a that's a really harrowing scene. You really see Doctor Martin Brenner at at his worst. There, I think, is like he's he's horrible. But what was it like working with uh, Matthew Matthew Modine? He he's super cool. He's super interesting. So he's actually. I'm sorry if it's loud. I have a air blower <laughs> right outside. Um, I would honestly say he's the best scene partner I've ever worked with because he is just a master at getting what he needs to get out of you. A lot of people, mm. they recognize the actors that are very showy. They're able to have these big grand emotions, but we don't always recognize those actors that are kind of the anchors of the scene, which are the actors that are able to... Um, basically be the grounded person that knows exactly how to manipulate their words and how, man how to manipulate the way they're looking at you to pull the most intense emotion out of you. And Matthew was really good about, especially when it was coming to him electrocuting me. All We did this thing called a series where you basically are doing the scene over and over and over a couple of times without cutting, without stopping. And he mm -hmm. did a really good job of continuing to ramp into it, continuing to like really bite with his words. And then when we got on his coverage, it was like super, super grounded, super like uh, Papa-esque, but yeah. he went there when it was my coverage. And I think that that's such a beautiful scene partner. Well, I mean, it came off in, in the scene and um... Like really, I, I like one of the things that we wanted to say before before coming on to you was that it like this 
honestly, I I, um, I I would be really proud of what you did in in this uh, in this series. Um, not only did you come off as a really good bully, but it was so many impactful scenes, and that was really one of them. Yeah. And um, we also wanted to know a little bit about what you were doing next. So you've got um, you're attached to the Art of Warren, which uh, you wrote it and you're starring in it. And we wanted to know if you can talk a little bit about that, and also if you're directing that as well. Yeah, I so that's that's something I'm still trying to workshop. Um, so I, I work as the general manager of this venue that I'm in right now. Um, it's a little stressful, and it was actually and this does connect. It seems like I'm venturing off, but it does connect. So it was pretty stressful on set because in between takes, I would be on the phone answering calls, returning emails, setting up tours so that some one of my tour managers could show people around. And I ended up booking a lot of things while I was out there. I say that because the art of Warren is essentially about this weird kind of like social loner type of character that has fallen into a lot of money and he uses that to purchase this wedding venue. And um, <laughs> it basically is all about the various hijinks that go into that. He's fallen in love with this famous author who um, is named Warren Phoebe. And he okay. basically devises this whole, um, this whole scheme to essentially win her over. And uh, some intense stuff happens after that. It's one of those projects I've been like working on for probably like three or four years now because I'm a perfectionist that keeps trying to make all of these like little improvements, little changes. But eventually I want to get into filming it. it it's meant to be this kind of like mockumentary style okay. kind of movie. Um, but yeah, I'm still workshopping it. So we'll see. Cool. It sounds good. Is is there anything else apart from that that you could talk about, or is it all still a bit hush hush? Not that I can talk about. I'm I'm attached as a series regular to one project that is yeah. still in the process of getting finalized and getting pitched. So we're in the process of um, still like getting a, a network, all all that kind of stuff. And so it won't be until they put that in the public sphere I can talk about. Um, that kind of stuff but for now i'm just kind of just kind of working at the venue in between filming i have a lot of opportunities that have recently come my way because of the show that i'm excited mm. about so just kind of going with the flow really cool and one last question um have you seen volume two i have not no <laughs> <laughs> so they were super secretive they only sent me all of the scenes that i was in nothing else so i have no idea what what ends up happening which is cool because i get to watch it as an actual viewer which i yeah. I'm, I'm super stoked for awesome well, thank you so much for talking to us and uh, volume two is out july 1st i believe july and everyone 1st. go and catch go and catch tristan in uh, stranger things season four if you haven't watched that yet you are very menacing in that show uh you had did, did you have to cut your hair for real oh yeah 100 yeah. and that came with this whole identity <laughs> crisis but that's something for another because you got this very you've got this very long hair now so, so. i do yeah it we oh. filmed that like a year and a half ago so i've had a lot yeah. of time to to grow it so perfect so you don't have to do that again well thank you thank you very much for talking to us tristan yeah thank you for having me i really appreciate it